call this meeting to order on this day, Monday, June 13th, 2016. If Clerk Kornecki could please call the roll for us tonight. Trustee Aiello? Here. Trustee Bolthus? Here. Trustee Wagner? Here. Trustee Cazone? Here. Trustee Case? Here. Trustee Taglia? Here. Present Bullwinkle? Here. You can all please rise for the pledge. I will lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to ask everybody to remain standing for one more second as Trustee Taglia leads us in the prayer. Our Heavenly Father, will thou be pleased to grant that this meeting, thus begun in order, be conducted in peace, and closed in harmony. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to add one more really quick thing. Um, just a quick moment of silence for the folks in Orlando. Let them know we're thinking of them tonight. Thank you. Okay. We are on the Committee of the Whole agenda, item number three, and we have a lot of faces in the audience with us tonight. If you need an agenda, it's in the rack on the door right outside of the chamber, so help yourself. Item number three of the Committee of the Whole is amendments to the agenda. Does anybody on the board have any amendments to this Committee of the Whole agenda? Uh, Trustee uh, Aiello. Madam President, I just yes. want to ask to amend the development agreement in item number, I forgot the number, item number we were, Thank you, Spike, for the development agreement. Yeah. If you could speak up a little bit, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I don't recall what item number we were for Golden Spikes Development Agreement. Five. Uh, number five. Five. My apologies. So what I'd like to do is amend that development agreement that we're proposing to incorporate a requirement that the list of brick and stone mm -hmm. that I've given to all the board members mm -hmm. be incorporated into that development agreement to require that the facades be of any of these brick and stone, which gives a good array of options. And these came from uh, Mike, uh, Bob Hitty from Illinois Brick, who I asked to come up with a solution for us. He said he'd stop in if we needed him. Okay. Madam President, point of order. Yes. Is, are we asking, you're asking to amend the agenda wouldn't we do this when we get to that item? Yes, you're right. absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yes. My apologies. That's okay. Well, I wasn't sure where you were going with it, so I want to at least let you finish I appreciate that. what Thank you were going to say. So, okay. Yeah. Correcting me. So, yeah. All right. So, Stay corrected. There are no amendments. No amendments. No amendments. Okay. All right then. I'm going to move on then to item number four on the Committee of the Whole presentation of the Villa Park Junior Women's Club scholarships. We have quite a crew here tonight from the Junior Women's Club, so if you want to come forward and state your names for the record and also autograph that piece of paper there, and then uh, we'll toss it over to you for the presentations. There's some very deserving people getting some scholarships tonight, so. Glad you could be here with us tonight. So nice full house for you. <laughs> okay. My name is Jen Krishbaum. I am the vice president of the Villa Park Junior Women's Club. I'm Jean Hansen, uh, president of the Villa Park Junior Women's Club. Yeah. I'm also the scholarship chair for the Villa Park Junior Women's Club. And I would like to thank the board for allowing us to speak and present our scholarship to the yeah, girls so tonight. Amazing. The Villa Park Junior Women's Club was founded in 2005 by four women who wanted <clears throat> to make their community a better place. In 2006, the first scholarship fundraiser was held and raised enough money to give a $1,000 scholarship to a deserving female Villa Park resident. Mm -hmm. This scholarship is awarded to a Villa Park re uh, female who uh, and is based on a high GPA and service to the community. The Villa Park Junior Women's Club raises these funds through various events, including our current fundraiser, which is our biggest fundraiser, the annual Trick or Trot 5K, which this year will be held on October 29th. This year will be our fourth year of holding the 5K, and we are working on making it the biggest and best event and encourage all members of the community to come and join us. In the past 10 years, we have given approximately $15,000 to 12 deserving girls. Wow. 
This year, we would like to recognize two deserving young ladies who have done numerous works of service in many areas of the community and have maintained a high GPA, as well as balancing many ex extracurricular activities. Excuse me. Mar Mariana Ma Martins and Alexa Henderson are this year's scholarship winners, and they are here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Hi, Alexa. I am Mariana Martins, and I am also incredibly thankful to the Junior Women's Club for this scholarship. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. So we just want to congratulate them and wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. Congratulations, girls. <laughs> it's a nice start to your education moving forward. So yeah, congratulations, and thanks to the Junior Women's Club for having the resources to do this for our youth here, our young adults. So thank, thank you very you much. much oh, it's our pleasure to have you tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yay. Okay, now moving on to item number five on the Committee of the Whole. Consider an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving a redevelopment agreement between the Village and Golden Spike, LLC. Andrew Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. Golden Spike, LLC, <coughs> excuse me, proposes the development of a mixed-use complex to be known as Garden Station, which is intended to be located adjacent to Vermont, to the north, Beverly to the east, Ardmore to the west, and Terrace Street to the south, approximately 150 feet north of the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad tracks. Garden Station will be comprised of approximately 230 residential dwelling units. These units will include studio, one bedroom, and two-bedroom apartments and two-bedroom townhomes ranging from approximately 600 square feet to approximately 1,400 square feet. Garden Station will also provide an indoor heated garage, clubhouse, fitness center, outdoor pool, and commercial retail space. This project will result in an investment by Golden Spike LLC of not less than $46 million. Due to the extraordinary cost to be incurred in connection with its development, including the demolition of the existing deteriorating and obsolete structures and revamping and reconstructing all utility systems required to service the project. Golden Spike LLC has requested financial assistance from the village in order to proceed with this project. And Your Honor, we do have uh, a number of guests yes. in the audience this evening, uh, including the developers and possibly their architect. I would like to kind of proceed through uh, portions of the TIF agreement and discuss some of the uh, the project also uh, obligations of the developer and obligations of the village so that the folks at home and the folks at the uh, in the audience can, can kind of get a grasp of the of the holistic uh, project that we have and I thought while I was doing that 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 we could also go ahead and uh, loop the photos of the proposed project while I speak so that the residents at home can take a look at the sketches that the developer has provided us. So would you like to do that? Sure. That okay. sounds like a plan. <coughs> okay. So what's what do you want to, yeah. <laughs> Your homework there. Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll get, okay. We'll get this conversation started then. Okay. So for the folks at home and, and folks in the audience and, and the president and board of trustees, staff uh, has worked uh, diligently with the developer or developers uh, a Golden Spike LLC and, and thank you for your patience uh, President Bowinkle and board and and uh, folks we it's a large development with a lot of moving parts and as staff we take a look at the project we take a look at certain things which need to be completed and we call those obligations so there's throughout the discussion you'll hear obligations of the developer obligations of the village in relationship to the overall project and so I want to go through the development agreement <clears throat> because you probably haven't seen it at home or possibly in the audience but I have a few things I want to talk about so I read I read to all of you the project which is 230 approximately dwelling units and what what the project is going to be called where it's going to be located what it's going to be comprised of 
so that you can kind of picture that particular project adjacent to the metro station on Ardmore. And as I talk, you can look at the photos and kind of see a uh, aerial view of the proposed complex, if you will, and I'll just call it a complex because really um, that's what it's going to be. So let me start with some time ago, uh, in September of 2014, the village, um, in preparation of this day, actually created the TIF. So we've passed three ordinances designating the redevelopment plan, the project area, and adopting uh, ordinance 3828 adopting the TIF. So this area that we're talking about is a TIF which encompasses part of the metro metro area, uh, the property for the development, and it goes to the west and includes Jefferson Swimming Pool, etc. So this project, as I described, uh, shall at least be $46 million. That's the threshold. And as I kind of go on, I'm going to start now with the obligations of the developer. And so the whole process includes financing, obviously. So one of the obligations of the developer is to have financing, and, and that's kind of obvious. But So one of the obligations is to provide proof of financing sufficient to construct the project and all the improvements. Um, incidental there there too is deemed necessary to permit occupancy and operations for its intended use, which may include a letter, a le uh, include lender financing through the Department of HUD and Urban Development, and it's a 221D4 program, and this we're going to call the financing, and shall also include TIF revenue bonds and reimbursement for redevelopment project costs. So, the developer, Golden Spike LLC, will be submitting an application to HUD, which has already been done. Uh, then they'll be invited back to submit, which I believe they have received an invite from HUD to uh, submit a follow-up application. So going through the 221D4 program, um, at the end of the day, at the end of the process, the developer uh, will go through the program, the process, and at the end of the day will be able to uh, basically uh, dig the next day because part of the process is submitting the financials to make sure that the project uh, is sufficient to generate funding will stand on its loan uh, uh, on its own and obviously from a financial lender standpoint you want that um, additionally they'll be submitting site plans uh, engineering plans etc and then as part of the process be submitting for permits so at the end of the HUD program process, the developer Golden Spike LLC will be able to dig the next day, and it's a very difficult process to get through. Um, it's a federal process. It's a process, process that is for rental housing for market rate. Um, so the HUD process I've talked about, PNC Bank uh, is working with Golden Spike and we'll be providing, obviously, the funding because they're a bank. HUD will guarantee the funding for 40 years. That's one of the benefits of going through the HUD program at an attractive interest rate. And then part of the project is also the sale of TIF revenue bonds and reimbursement for redevelopment project costs. Now, redevelopment project costs are part of the TIF, and so will the TIF revenue bonds. It's all part of the financing for the project. Now going back to the obligations of the developer, part of the process is to obtain all zoning approvals and permits um, required by the village or any other agency. And I'm just going to br briefly go through these because this is quite a large summary of obligations and legalese and I'm not going to bore everyone. But part of the obligations is submit a budget including all costs to be incurred and we've seen that minimum threshold to meet is $46 million. Another obligation is to construct the project and all improvements in accordance with all approvals as required by ordinances, rules, regulations of the village and the state of Illinois and the federal government and all laws, rules and regulations of any other unit of government. E, part of the obligations, and I want to kind of go through this because really it's a timeline because you're probably thinking, Keener, get on with it. 
Tell me when it's going to be constructed. Tell me some timelines. So within the redevelopment agreement, we have timelines. So to commence construction of the project on or before June 1st, 2017, and to complete the project and receive a certificate of occupancy from the village on or before December 31st, 2018. Such commencement and completion dates can be extended by the village upon request of the developer solely for good cause, which approval shall not be unreasonably withheld. So as long as such extension does not adversely impact the terms and conditions of the issuance of the TIF revenue bonds. And I remember the TIF revenue bonds will be part of the project and we'll discuss those in a moment. Another obligation is to maintain its standing as a limited liability company. Um, G is throughout the terms of the agreement to make available to the village during regular business hours the books and records of the developer pertaining to construction, repair, maintenance, replacement of all components of the project. And uh, another obligation is to pay all bills and invoices issued and taxes of any kind assessed against the developer. <coughs> Uh, another obligation is to deliver to the village copies of its real estate tax bills for the subject property, commencing with bills payable in 2016. And obviously, it's a t if it's a TIF and you have reimbursable expenses, you want to make sure that the property taxes are paid. But Section 2.2, which is the, the next section, is ongoing compliance by the de developer and additional obligations. And so these are compliance dates, which is very important also, because you, now you have the construction dates, now you have the compliance dates. In the event financing is not approved for the project by May 31st, 2017, this agreement shall be terminated and all obligations of the village hereunder shall be canceled. This deadline may be extended by the village upon request by the developer and such approval shall not be unreasonably withheld so long as the developer has been diligently pursuing financing under the HUD program 20, uh, 221 D4, and the delay is not solely with, within the control of the developer. But no event shall the extension be granted beyond December 31st, 2017. So we've talked about construction, now we've talked about compliance. And as you can tell, folks, there's a lot of moving parts within this particular development. Um, it, <clears throat> and under section 2.2 is understood and agreed that any obligations of the village pursuant to this agreement shall be contingent upon the continuing compliance and satisfaction of all covenants, agreements, and obligations of the developer. So now I'm switching to the TIF revenue bonds, which is a key po component of the financing and the success of this development. So section 3.3, .3, real quickly, is the developer's obligation to finance the project. Obviously, you have to finance the project. The developer conveys and agrees to submit to the village proof of financing sufficient to pay the total project cost of the project, including without limitation such soft costs as professional fees, marketing costs, and insurance. The developer intends to fund the total project cost from developer equity, the financing, and through the issuance of bonds and reimbursement cost to the developer pursuing pursuant to this agreement. So it's all tied together. And moving on to discuss the TIF revenue bonds. So I'll read a portion, then I'll jump down. It is the intention of the parties that a portion of the project may be financed through the issuance of bonds by the village. The village agrees that so long as the developer is not in default under this agreement and has provided evidence of the financing as required, it shall issue bonds in a principal amount to be determined by a bond underwriter, which principal amount and cost of the issuance shall be supported solely from 75% of the incremental re real estate taxes as defined in section 5.1. So folks, what we're doing is the project will be built and from the incremental real estate taxes produced by Garden Station, these incremental taxes will be placed in a sub-account, and it's going to be named Garden Station sub-account. And out of the Garden Station sub-account, we'll take proceeds from the incremental real estate taxes and pay the principal and interest on the bonds and reimburse the developer for 
project eligible cost. And that is 75% of the incremental property taxes generated by this project. 25% of the incremental property taxes generated by this project will, be, will come to the village for improvements in the area. And as I mentioned earlier, this TIF was created in September of 2014, and the, the Jefferson Pool is included within this TIF, and it's the intention, and we discussed this earlier, that some of these proceeds could help maintain that pool or improve that pool um, to survive and, and, and to remain open, quite frankly. Um, let's see. Let's go to the obligations of the village. So I mentioned the obligations of the developer. Now there's obligations of the village because obviously the developer is relying on the village to come through and the village is relying on the developer to come through. And so quite frankly, you reduce everything to writing, which is agreed upon by both sides and this is the redevelopment agreement, which we're discussing this evening. So the obligations of the village to Golden Spike are the following. Uh, further assistance to the developer. Uh, so upon proof of the financing for the project, approval of all final engineering and final site plans to proceed to apply for a building permit for the project, the village agrees to do the following. To waive all village internal inspection fees, but not the fees required to be paid to outside vendors for review and inspections of the project. So folks, sometimes projects are so large that internally, staff cannot complete the inspections because they're so large and we're limited on staff. So some of the inspections are provided by third party consultants. So what this means, quite frankly, is if it goes to a third party consultant and the village receives an invoice, that that invoice fee is not waived, that it'll be passed on. So B, to waive any and all village development fees, including but not limited to building permit, impact water and sewer connection fees applicable to the project except any detention variance fees. And folks, as you know, for detention, uh, we do not have a utility um, a detention or stormwater utility, so we, those fees are really needed to prevent flooding and maintain certain areas within the village. So those detention variance fees are not waived in this, in this development agreement. So folks, that's a very, very brief discussion of the redevelopment agreement for the development of uh, Garden Station, which is again 230 units approximately, made up of one or two bedrooms and townhomes with a threshold value cost, if you will, of $46 million. Um, staff fully supports the, the development. We think this uh, development in that particular area or in, area, any, in any area of the village would be definitely an asset. And uh, Rick Goldman and his development team, we believe has done a very good job presenting the materials. Recently held another uh, community input meeting. Uh, staff has been involved with conference calls every Friday morning for months now discussing various things. Staff has been on the phone with HUD uh, verifying and understanding the process because it's new, new to staff as well. So we have talked to the actual representative that will review uh, the applications uh, going forward. And the, and the HUD representative is delighted that the village has reached out to them and discussed the project and is delighted this, this particular project will, will occur if approved this evening uh, within the village of Villa Park. So at this time, Your Honor and Board and, and folks in the audience at home, we'd, I'd like to introduce uh, Rick Goldman um, and his team to answer any questions, or maybe I uh, misinterpreted something incorrectly so I could be certainly corrected, as I am at home all the time. So, <laughs> well, if you'd <laughs> so, like to come thank up you, and, Yes, and maybe talk a little bit oh, more, you know, looking at our developer, Rick Goldman, <laughs> and his team. If you want to come up to the podium and okay. maybe give another maybe overview of what we're seeing on the screen and fill in any blanks, and then we'll toss it out there's some residents in the audience that might have some questions so okay um hi i'm rick goldman with uh, golden spike development my partners rod angle and ike hong are here as well as eric overby from fitzgerald and associates our architect uh, on the project um, i'd like to commend manager keener on an outstanding synopsis of a very um uh, uh you know a, a 
it, it takes a lot of work to try to distill down a lot of uh, interesting ideas that ultimately get to um, how uh, projects like this are ultimately developed and how dramatically positive the impacts are on the overall community. Um, <coughs> I, um, we, you know, we're, we do this across the country. We're, we've probably never been as excited about a project as we are this one for um, all the reasons we've been talking about collectively as a community and a group for many um, uh, months about the value of this particular site and, and the need for this kind of housing in Villa Park. So I think what Garden Station represents is uh, an opportunity for people to not only live in this community, but people that don't live in this community, that want to live in this community, to come and experience how great Villa Park truly is. Um, and I think that's part of the interesting thing that these type of transit-oriented projects uh, uh, represent. So, you know, I know we've all, we've had a tremendous um, amount of community support throughout uh, the whole process from when we first started acquiring land to doing something and that was really culminated on June 1st at our community meeting where we had a tremendous turnout. I mean, I think well over 100 uh, residents showed up and honestly, in our, in our careers, um, it is unusual when you get um, that kind of incredible positive support, not only for the concept and for the product type, but for some of the nuances of the building. I mean, there were actually people photographing the boards. They were so excited. You know, they were bringing out their iPhones, which I've never really seen done before. Uh, really photographing and, and so excited about the fact that this is uh, finally on the horizon in the very near future for their community. And it wasn't just Northsiders. There were South uh, uh, Villa Park. People from together uh, really unanimously um, uh, were so excited by the type of building, the uh, amenities that the building provides, and what this will mean to Villa Park and its, and its uh, thing. So I think the only thing I would add, just I know everyone is very well aware of it, the building has a tremendous amount of amenities, both in, inside and outside. So I guess, Rich, if there's one thing I would just add is the amount of amenities that go into the building are, this is really a luxury, uh, class A, incredibly energy efficient and sustainable building. And, and, that, and that's a, a, an achievement in and of itself. So this building will have a swimming pool, sun decks, billiard rooms, screening room, you know, all those kind of state of the art in-house fitness, um, super class A, you've seen all the, in the prior presentations, finishes, quartz countertops, um, undermount sink, stainless steel appliances, uh, custom flooring. So this is truly luxury that really does not exist in this marketplace right now. And by marketplace, I, I will say Eastern DuPage County and, and really Chicagoland to uh, a greater extent. So uh, you add that with the highest level of energy efficiency that anyone has ever seen. It's really uh, creates a, a 21st century presence and building for uh, what we hope will be more development and future uh, uh, additions to the neighborhood in the fabulous Ardmore district. So, you know, the community has, uh, and the village has done such a great job of preparing for this development. Uh, and really like the icing on the cake with those fantastic signs, the monument signs that have gone in on the corner. I don't know how many people have had a chance to see them and enjoy them, but they're magnificent is really the only way to describe them. And the sidewalk, the street wall, the infrastructure in place, the, all the pieces that this journey has taken to come to have aligned to bring us here tonight. Uh, and I think that this has been a thoughtful development. I think a lot of people are uh, concerned about success rates and sometimes we wanna be anxious and but we wanna be successful. And sometimes success comes from being patient and crossing your T's and dotting your I's. And I think this group collectively between Village and our development team has done that. So there's a lot of things that have to happen, like stormwater detention that's in place, been verified with engineering, the street wall, uh, the zoning, the TIF district, the things that have all assembled to get to where we are uh, have really been thoughtful, methodical, and have been every step that any team collectively could make to ensure a fantastic project and a really and a, a new downtown for Villa Park. Okay. okay. Is there anything else that staff wants to add before we toss it to the people? Uh, yes, Your Honor, may I? Yes, of course. I, and I apologize, uh, Board, but I did, I did not uh, mention one other mm -hmm. thing. While we spoke to the HUD representative, you know, I was curious and I said, okay, so what is 
your success rate and or failure rate if you would if you want to do it on the flip side so uh, the failure <coughs> rate is less than one percent if you proceed through the HUD program and you reach the end um, so less than one percent we're very very uh, pleased with that so thank you Honor. okay this there's been a lot discussed up here so far but want to see if there's anybody in the audience that has any questions about the development so if anybody wants to come forward this is the opportunity yes hi need you to come up to the podium and state your name my name is Bob Adams. Yes. I live at 419 North Yale. And if you could sign the piece of paper there and. I did that. Okay. Oh, great. And we can give you three minutes because there might be a few more uh, people behind you. So. I'm just curious about the PUD. Okay. I got no there was no notification of the latest PUD. Now, <coughs> way back when, I guess, about the time Moby Dick was a minnow, a PUD would be brought out and it would be good, good for 18 months. And it had to be uh, resubmitted. Mm -hmm. One of the prior boards that had a PUD decided that we're not going to condo, we're going to go apartments, so we'll forget about that and we'll just have a PUD with apartments. I think some better take another good hard look at that because you set up a PUD supposedly according to the zoning, and I'm going back to you know, the history. It was 18 months. I just want to get that clarified. Okay. And now the part that nobody wants to talk about. No street signs around our area keeping trucks off of residential property. They're driving up and down like if we're a highway. Vermont is not a highway. None of those streets are highway. It's all residential. Okay. Demolition. Yeah. When you get those dump trailers, those dump trailers don't think, care what you people say. They're going to do what they want to do and the way they want to do it. Cement trucks, they get the, the, the route they take by their dispatcher. You have no say so. I thought we could control that. Obviously, I'm told we cannot in talking to contractors. The construction, there's going to be dirt, mud, you name it. Who's going to clean it up for us? I doubt that the contractor is going to have a whole lot to do with it, and maybe your sweet street sweeper is going to get wore out this time. The damage to the streets. Those streets where I'm at, at north end of the uh, town, they were put in about 68. Mm -hmm. They were 20 year streets. Mm -hmm. They've been there for over 40 years, and they're such, so a lot of signs of wear. Public Works is fully aware of it, and they're doing whatever they can at this point in time. And during the day, we have a little parade every so often of 53-foot trailers hooked onto a tractor that's really belching smoke, which means maximum load for those things is 80,000 pounds. We're sending heavy, tra heavy tractor trailers down the streets because we don't have any signage that says, keep the heck off of these streets. Nobody wants to bring that up. Why don't we want anybody to know that? We live there, and we can listen to the noise all day long. Right. You don't live there, so you don't hear the noise all day long. Oh, actually. Okay. And right now, if you take a look at the condition of Vermont, if it's in compliance with anything that's the way it should be, we need a lot of eye tests. We need people to take a lot of hearing tests because evidently they're deaf and they have a blind eye. So I'm just saying when they get going, they start the demolition. Mm -hmm. They clean it up, it's going to look nice as hell, and they're going to start. Reverse all the processes. That stuff doesn't magically fly into the construction site. It's trucked in, and trucks run with the maximum weight that they can put on it. And just for what it's worth, I used to, way back when, when I was younger, mm -hmm. I used to drive those things. Yeah. So, you know, say what you want, I don't really care. I know what I know, and I've been there. I hope to help any of you people had to work that way, but mm -hmm. I have. And that's my biggest concern. Okay. The mess that we are going to have to deal with. And 
And I guess the final thought I've got is, do we have a fire truck that'll make the top of that building? I know we got a new ladder truck. We got pumpers. However, we need one hell of a pumper to be able to take that much water out of our the system to get up that high. Yep. And you ain't gonna do it by a bucket per game, let me tell you that for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I can tell you that in regards to the truck issue, I've been in contact with the manager a couple weeks, a few weeks ago now in regards to signage because I, I, I live on the north side and I know what you're talking about. I've seen the semis and whatnot coming through there. So definitely I've put that on, I've put that on the radar for sure. Now, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not far from you. If you put the signs, no trucks on Madison Road, there's one sign for one corner on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate the staff. They've been, you know, addressing the truck issue. I know that. So with the other things, would the manager or the developer, some manager would like to address some of those other questions and concerns? Sure. I need, I need you to go to the, to the podium, of course. I have a PUD uh, 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 comment that you made um, from a while ago. This project actually com a lot of stuff on uh, list, conforms too. to the village's current zoning that is in place for the TOD overlay district. So this project is based on what the current zoning that currently is on place for the land. So there is not a PUD that uh, mandates the type of development that, that is going with this project. It is following the uh, current zoning mm -hmm. um, for the TOD overlay that went into place, I believe, last September or something. Or so. Yeah, yes. something like that. Just, uh, just, just well, clarify that. Well, uh, sir, Bob, well, yeah. yeah PUD. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. Would you like to address any of the other issues in regards to the demo, dirt, that type of thing? Hopefully, Your Just Honor, really I quick think, while we I are think, here. Um, the items that were mentioned are, are consistent with any type of development that you have, whether it's cement trucks or dust or mud or damage to streets. We're, we're always cognizant of that. And <clears throat> as part of the development, I would suspect that staff will have a very good relationship with the construction folks and uh, we'll be able to talk to these folks and, and designate which way to come in and out uh, etc as we do with many other areas of the uh, village um, and if there's not compliance it'll be with anything else that we do there'll be a citation and and after a while I'm sure they'll be very uh, annoyed with the citation it's very expensive and uh, they'll adhere to a uh, code so thank you, Your Honor. Right. We'll definitely keep your concerns in, in mind. But I have to, there's some other folks in the audience. So, 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 so yeah, yep, yep. It's all on our radar, okay? All right. Thank you for that. Is there anybody else from the public like to uh, question, comment, concern? Sure, come on up. And I need to. Oh, I actually don't live in town, but I sell houses in town. Okay. Oh. So my question is coming from a real estate standpoint. Um, and this is probably directed to you guys. They talked about market rate for the rents. What are you looking at for your rents from a one bedroom to a two bedroom to a townhome? You, you can come and on if up. If you could ask their question, because yeah. that's going to go on to my next part of the question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a multi stage question. Yes, right, it so is. Yeah, I need you to stand up and, and be at the all podium. Right, so just so people can hear so we can get this all um, on TV. Right now, we're targeting, um, actually, I'm going to let Rod answer this question, uh, who's much more. Uh, involved with our operations and, and marketing, if you don't mind, no, because I, I, I hope you much closer to the exact number. Yeah. Sure. Right. Right now, we are targeting about thirteen hundred dollars for a, a studio mm -hmm. uh, apartment, uh, sixteen hundred dollars for a one bedroom apartment, uh, twenty two hundred dollars for a uh, two bedroom uh, unit, and uh, an average of about twenty eight hundred dollars for the townhome. Obviously, some will, will have different floor plans, so some of the units would be a little bit less, and some would be a little bit more, depending on the, the unit size. So basically, we're anywhere from thirteen hundred to twenty-eight hundred dollars, and we have the least of the townhome units. For the most part, they're going to be between the uh, thirteen hundred and twenty-two hundred dollars per month, and okay. that would include one um, underground parking space, also. Okay. Right, great. Thanks. Thanks. Um, okay. So, from again a real estate standpoint. You get south of St. Charles, south of Washington Boulevard, the Prairie Path, your price in this town grows up drastically. You know, Voltine doesn't have a problem. 
on their spots, 1800 bucks a month for two bedrooms. You get north of St. Charles, you get north of the tracks, you see the value just drop quite a bit. So I guess my concern is, and I've heard this from clients, do you guys feel comfortable that you can get that kind of rent up there? And if you can't get that kind of rent, what's your backup plan? I mean, how many vacant units can you sit before you have a problem? My other question, one more yeah. thing is well, traffic yeah. flow. Um, are you guys going to be able to handle that many cars on our more by the tracks? What's the plans for traffic flow? And like I said, I'm hearing this from residents, right. people that you go in and do a fair market because now mm -hmm. they're thinking they want to sell because of this. Mm -hmm. So that that's one of my questions. Traffic flow and what your plan is if the runs can't be substantiated. Okay. Thanks. All right. So you can speak okay. to the traffic study you did and yeah. answer the other question too. Really quick. Um, I'll answer the first question. Are we comfortable? Well, yeah, of course we're comfortable um, that we could do this. We wouldn't have invested the amount of money that we've invested to date or gone this far. But it's not just the three of us are a feeling. Um, there is substantial empirical data that has already been done. There have been four independent market uh, analysis of this particular rental stream, and all have come in at or above. So, um, you know, this is what we do for a living. Um, we're, we're, we're developers, which means we create things that aren't currently in a place. So we don't have the luxury in our line of work to simply say, well, if this guy is doing X on this side, then I get Y because it's already built by the nature of our business. And after nearly 30 years in it and as much as we've done, um, we do our best to um, mitigate those risks. Um, and we're really good at it. And knock on wood, in this particular project, um, we have more supporting evidence, not just a feeling or a hunch, than we have ever probably had for a project. So if you talk to our lender, PNC, as you've noted, Ovaltine has already putting numbers in per square foot that are in excess of this building, in a building that's almost 18 years old without indoor parking. So I think you answered your own question that clearly there is a market in Villa Park. It's already been established. It's underserved. That's the problem. You know, what we see is there's too much demand and not nearly enough supply. And that's what we do. Uh, so we've been involved in that for a long time. So uh, as developers, we look to the future. We thrive on things that don't currently exist uh, because that's what we do for a living. So um, we wouldn't be standing here. We wouldn't have the financial support. We wouldn't have the lending capacity if our track record wasn't as good as it is to say, uh, and this isn't reading the tea leaves. This is a, a basic uh, analysis of a market, as we said, that Ovaltine has already clearly demonstrated that people want to be in Villa Park with luxury uh, rental housing um, that provides a lot that that building doesn't. So they're great, and they're great neighbors, um, but we are going to provide more. Uh, and I think that's what uh, this community absolutely needs. In terms of parking, and um, uh, there was a traffic study done, and uh, the parking level is split into two. You basically bifurcate it. You split it in half, the building in size. And the one thing that you realize in traffic analyses of these type of buildings or anything like this, this is an office building. So it's not like there's a time of the day when 90% of the building empties and 90% of the building comes in. So in family multifamily residential, you get a staggering, and particularly in today's uh, environment with entrepreneurs, people that work from home, people that work in alternative uh, hours or lifestyle, is that you see a much more kind of uh, trickle and variance and, and transit-oriented developments like is this. Well, you'll have residents that use the train, you know, that come in and out. And again, the study supports that um, as they uh, flow on the streets that um, is currently there. So. Um, those have been done and analyzed, but that's how you, um, uh, that's how the, the things handles it. And a building that has two garages, one enters from uh, Beverly, the other from Ardmore, you're, you're, you're only got 100, and those don't ever all come out or come in at one time, you know. So, rare, rare. Okay. Anybody else from the public like to speak on this item before we toss it up to the board? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to toss it up to the board. Questions and comments about this. Oh. Okay, Trustee Al or Trustee Bolfus. Sorry about that. Some notes with some of the questions from the uh, from the public. As uh, far as the market rate, uh, I believe the developer supplied us with two studies that you guys did. And to be honest with you, when we got those studies, we were kind of skeptical. So uh, we, the village, hired its own uh, 
Tracy Cross, I think it was, mm -hmm. to do a market study. Yes. And uh, yeah. surprise, surprise, they came out the same. You know, so that was kind of encouraging. And then also with the uh, HUD approval, and if you're going to go go for uh, market rate rents, HUD had a, is going to look at it and make sure that those rents are achievable. So there's really going to be four uh, people looking at to make sure that this pro, uh, this <coughs> development can be self-sustaining. So and. I hope it does. The world works well. I'm pretty sure it is going to work out uh, okay, and it's, it's going to be a very good asset to uh, to Villa Park. And for right now, I'll just let somebody else have something to say. I okay. just want to make a comment on the uh, market studies that we're pretty confident that we sh should <coughs> would be able to uh, hit those rents. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Trustee Gazon. Uh, getting down to the, the market rate analysis that's been done and one of the thing one of the I think big concerns that we as a board have seen and I'm sure you've had questions of um, when people hear HUD housing mm -hmm. the first thing they think of is section 8 it's gonna be low income obviously this is a market rate development it's gonna be high-end and is it my understanding too that the HUD develop or the HUD financing you're getting will not allow subsidized housing is that correct and yeah. I think I think if that gets out um, yeah, yeah. to that to the public that they, they see that this is strictly high-end housing that it you know it's not going to eventually you know if you you're running low you know you, you've only got 50 percent uh, uh, rentals you cannot go uh, to subsidized housing yeah the the program that we're in uh, is again just so we're all perfectly clear PNC is the lender and HUD provides a secondary insurance for the loan so that projects like this that are difficult to finance during traditional can get going off the ground. And as uh, Manager Keener said, for 40 years this is a place which is very attractive to everybody because the, the largest risk for the project is interest rate. So as long as we're getting very technical tonight, let's remember that interest rate risk is the greatest risk to the project. Interest rates could jump dramatically, okay, or uh, stay where they are, which we believe they will be as we enter this program and do something. But the key for the timing is to start so that our interest rate remains the same. The beauty of the program is we don't have to go refinance in five or seven years, which is very typical. So in most of our portfolio, we're very fortunate. If we can get a 10-year note, we're, we're really happy. To get a 40 is unheard of. So this means we won't be having a dialogue to say, hey, we're, 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 we're needing to refinance this in 10 years. Um, now, how do we look at this problem? So the answer is you are correct. We cannot provide uh, subsidized or low. It, it, would, it would destroy the project. It would never get approved. There is no model that, that you could think of that would make that feasible in any scenario. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, trustee Taglia. I just want to mention about um, during construction I'm sure there will be noise and a mess and things like that but I'm sure it's something the manager and his staff will keep an eye on I know people don't believe it but we'll do our best but at the end of the day when the project's over you're gonna have a new development that will help pull in other people to helpfully further develop the part of town a lot of people have made comments to me about why do we bother fixing up this part of town why are we developing this part of town? They call it the bad <coughs> part of town. Well, if we don't do anything to fix it and develop it, it'll always stay that way. Once this development is done, your property values are going to go up. The equalized assessed value of the village is going to go up. It's going to help everybody. I mean, I could see this sparking development on Ardmore. Maybe we'll have other new developments following this. So I know that while it's being done, you know, people are going to have noise there's going to be dirt but that's just part of the construction process mm -hmm. um, as far as the village goes I'm sure we'll do our best you know try to mitigate any problems we have with traffic but when this is done I'm sure everyone's going to be happier so I I want to thank uh, Rick and his guys for coming to town and, and uh, you know investing in Villa Park so thank you okay. Anybody else? Trustee Wagner 
Thank you, Madam President. Mm -hmm. I just want a clarification, listening to the manager read the developer requirements and our requirements. Um, the one section, in the event the financing is not approved for the project, I heard you say May 17th, or excuse me, May 31st is actually March 31st, is that correct? Yeah. Financing for this project is not approved by March 31st, March 31st. 2017, yes. Yeah. I just, wanted, I just wanted to clarify yes. that. Yes, March because 31st. Because it has to commence by June 1. Yeah, there's two different timelines. Correct. One's compliance, Thanks. one's construction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say that, you know, having, you know, we had our two-on-twos, in my case, a one-on-one -on -one with the developer. I appreciated the, the question and the answers and uh, the detailed description of the project. Uh, also, the... Uh, public meeting that was held at Allegra. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, my sense was that the, the, the members of the community that were there had a positive impression of the project. And uh, I, just to echo what Trustee Taglia said, you know, this, this project could be a catalyst for, you know, a major redevelopment of that area. So uh, I just want to voice my support for the project. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Trustee Case. Trustee Case. There's a gentleman in the audience that I don't know if he'd like to speak or not, but does a lot of development. I'd like to have his opinion on the cleanup in uh, cement trucks when he does developments, how it's all handled. Mr. Okay. King? What? Hope I'm not putting you on the no, spot. He was well, waiting well, for just, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Alex King, 140 West St. Charles Road, and uh, I have in my career done the sort of things that these gentlemen are doing, and to this magnitude and size, and the old saying, if you can't bake a cake without breaking a few eggs, <laughs> it's going to take some patience. If you think they can do it without mud on the street and noise and other things, they can do that. This is a real asset. This is an extremely difficult, complicated thing to pull off. The way it was analyzed here and summarized, our esteemed leader made it sound rather simple. <laughs> it's anything but how many years have we been it's working? Complicated. On? Like your fifth year, sixth year? Yeah. 2007, but who's counting? Right. Well, after he gets it done, <laughs> there'll, be another, there'll be another year, year and a half of construction. And then after that, he still has to fill it and get it functioning and running. I think it's a great step forward for the village, and I've watched this all the way through. I think we're very lucky to have them, but we've got to be tolerant and meet their needs as best we can for our own greedy needs. If we help them, it'll help us. So, for what my opinion's worth, that's it. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Do you have anything else? No? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Trustee Allo. I'll be brief. <coughs> This is what gets built in downtown Glenelg, downtown Wheaton, downtown Elvis. Put your mic up because I don't hear you. So that stuff gets built there in those towns. There's a couple boards going around. Those are the pictures. That's what we need here. We want to be a better town, a beautiful development like this. These guys can do it. These guys are capable of doing it. They've already done it in other places. I would have preferred to vote for this as a common development project. Not going to happen. Financing doesn't exist. Totally agree. It's got to be an apartment building. If we got to go that way, though, then let's at least get something built in town that's going to make the downtown look like what we're trying to make this thing look like, which is... We've, I've heard from this board many times that, you know, ILO, it's not just we're a bunch of waifs working for repairing the cars of people that live in Oak Brook and live in Elmhurst, live in Glen Allen, lining up our streets with their cars to come and get them fixed. And their parts of their things they use in their house to get those fixed. We're capable of being far more than just the service industry and uh, tradespeople. And I don't necessarily agree or disagree, but in order to generate that kind of sense of uh, 
elegance in a development project that you're looking for to make a town like that, then you have to do brick and stone. And it's got to be brick and stone like it is everywhere else where you're trying to make your town, what you're trying to make your town look like. So one thing I would ask the board to do, I, I'm not, I'm not going to ask anymore for it to go back to a kind of development project ever. Uh, but I am going to beg the board to require the development agreement today that a list of brick and stone that I've provided to the board members that I got from uh, Rob Hitty from Elmer's or from Illinois Brick, who's in the audience, be included as a requirement that the developer provide on the facade all the way around the building. And if you want to give them a break somewhere, stop it at some level where you stop it at the fifth floor or the sixth floor where there's breaks. Um, in other towns, that's what they've done. They've done top floor, for example, in Wheaton, a set of three buildings, that top floor is not brick. So this, this has to have brick and stone. It's not going to be brick and stone. It's not going to look like what you want your downtown to look like. And these guys, they're motivated to be great. These guys are motivated because this project is their first project like this. They haven't done this big a project. So this is the builder you want because these guys are trying to make a name. This puts them in a different world. This puts them in a very, very big world that's run by a very, very few, very tiny amount of developers and people that have the capacity to finance this kind of project. So you want these guys here, but let's make them do something artistic. Make them do brick and stone at least. That's all I have. Anybody else on the board? Oh, oh well, sure. Wow. Please, yes. I, I got I, that. Um, you sprung up out of your chair there, so. Well, I, I mean, with all due respect, um, we've probably spent uh, three and a half years developing the facade for this building. And uh, we have been, been hired uh, the, the greatest design professionals in the Chicago land area to do this. So uh, in fact, it took two. We actually changed architects uh, and went with this Gerald who's portfolio and experience in, in creating facades in downtown is by far the most robust in, in all of Chicago. Um, so uh, that coupled with, you know, there are um, brick elements, but to just unilaterally say brick is better or brick is good is not the way great development happens. Great development happens by being very sensitive to your sense of place, by representing something that is uh, both interesting and stands the test of time, and that provides a home and a beautiful home for a community for not yet today, but years to come. So as developers, a lot of times we look forward. So this is a building that's gonna open in 2018. I, I am very familiar with the built environment. I tour all kinds of different things. And I could show you a million boards of a million towns that have not one piece of brick on it that have 100% occupancy and waiting lists on it. So to assume that at this point in the process with all that's gone into it and at a level of complexity that a building material, one building material makes a, uh, 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 the difference between a, a success or a failure I think is, is not fully uh, respecting how complicated this process is and what we put into it. And I will say that because this building represents some materials that people have never seen in this area before. We introduced a building material in our last project in New Mexico called Nichiha. And I want to say, I mean, Ike, what do we have, 15 phone calls where people literally ran off the road stopping and taking pictures and calling us, what is that? I have to have that. I have to have it. It's incredible. A building that's wildly successful. This building introduces some new materials to the marketplace that not only are exquisite and create a stunning uh, facade and a feeling for today, but last infinitely better than some simple bricks or uh, type of limestone products. But I'm not sure how developed you uh, looked at the plans, but there is brick in the appropriate areas. So we do have brick and limestone in the project. 
we believe we have it in the appropriate places and in the appropriate quantities. So to say, well, that's just what they did at would, would, you know, Elmhurst, that building you showed, would you like us to take this facade and punch it full of holes and put air conditioning units in them like they did? Would anybody in this room feel good about that? We've spent infinitely more money to put in a mechanical system that nobody sees. So I could say, okay, well, let's do that, and then take all the money out of the air conditioning system and punch holes in a facade. This is a complicated, complicated thing that we put a lot of thought into. I feel very, very strongly that this design, and it was applauded. There were people taking pictures of it from this community and clapping at the end of it. That's how excited they were to see this kind of building coming to their community because this gives an identity for Villa Park. So if the answer is, hey, that's what everybody else in the community did, and we should just kind of do something that's kind of like them. Um, that's not a recipe for success. A recipe for success is creating a building like this that creates an identity and has a sense of place that says, this is Villa Park. This is Villa Park. This is, this is going to be the hub of downtown. And we've done that. So there, there's no, there's no uh, when you take a look at the, the, let me show you this material if I can, just because it's really hard to read. Uh, doing things. But when you see things like this, okay, this is a wood, this is a cementious wood type of product in a huge volume, okay? Now, just because Fitzgerald and our team spent, you know, months uh, and years exploring what type of material creates a fire retardancy and looks good 25 years from today as it does, but also creates elements that say wood, metal siding, this is metal lap siding that's unheard of in the so yeah, the building has an aesthetic, but it has a brilliant aesthetic and one that everybody in this community will be very proud of. So you know, our goal isn't just to go do what everyone else has done. I think you put it very well. We're here to do something that no one else has done. And that's what we do. We do that in every community we go into. It doesn't mean you just create something that looks like it doesn't belong. But you say, wow, we introduce things that say, they look amazing today and they look good 25 years from now. So our goal is to introduce Villa Park to a whole group of people that aren't currently here, as well as the current residents. And this will be a project that when you drive down and you look at our street wall, if you can get far enough away to actually see it from your car, because all you really will be looking at is the brick, because the first 14 feet of the building is brick and awnings and limestone and those other things that are on the civic experience, which is the street wall, that you'll say, wow, I mean, this building will create a wow factor. We've sent this building to three different architects for peer review across the, the area and the region. Everyone came back with, wow. That was the first expression, it was like a wow. That building's beautiful. Sent it to marketing people, do something. So we didn't just, we didn't just decide that, you know, well, this is the, the most efficient way to build a building from a cost standpoint. We put a lot of thought into these, these building materials are not, um, uh, they also ran or doing something that's better. Um, they're, they're um, thoughtful and, and, and time consuming and uh, I think that the amount of brick that's in the building in limestone is appropriate for uh, the, the place where it's going to belong. Okay. So, very good, right? Always has the perfect answer and definitely brings you in. So, this is definitely the guy we want. But, should be brick <laughs> and stone. <I> <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Trustee Bolthus. I have two more things. Now. Yes. Um, you, you mentioned a number of times that the HUD backing is like for 40 years. But the, the village of split on the TIF part is a 75 25, but that's not going to go on for 40 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just going to cover the development costs. Do you have any projections on how many years uh, it would take before the development costs were satisfied by the TIF, tip district? Yeah, you might as well stay there. Stay, stay here for a little bit, huh? They're good, good. Yes, so that's an excellent question. The TIF split is approximately 17 years-ish is when the village gets all the money. So for the first 17, it roughly, and it starts at almost $280,000 per year in addition to, to, to what you're getting. And then 
in when those redevelopment costs are Burr paid off uh, through that. It's about 17 years because of the construction cycle and how it happens. Um, what then uh, uh, would happen is the village would get all of the no. revenue. It's not okay. what the agreement. The agreement provides that the developer gets 75%, but there's a cap. And the cap is it's the lesser of 75% the life of the TIF, which will be only 20 years, because we've just stated best case scenario occupancy is going to be 2018, which would be then payable in 2019. So you're down three years. We declared our TIF last year, okay? So it is actually going to be a 19 or 20 year payout to you. However, however, the maximum that the developer can get is 25% of their total cost. So as Rich mentioned, they have to prove to us that they are spending $46 million. And if, God loving, you spend $40 million, they get that much less from this village. We are not going to contribute more. <coughs> so that's actually the, the total formula. And forgive me for interrupting, but I wrote it. So I know. <laughs> right. But, so that was the timeline. But it's important. The metrics are really important, too, to realize that it starts at, home at like 280 and then when it burns off, it's a million three eighty per year. Mm -hmm. So, so the economic benefit to the village is tremendous in terms of one project, and that's not counting the additional retail uh, uh, the retail. development, both residential and retail, whatever happens in and along the Ardmore uh, Avenue kind of district. I like to call it the Ardmore district now since those beautiful signs are in there. The Ardmore district. <laughs> it will, all that's in addition, which we don't calculate, but the village is a beneficiary of. Yeah. So that's roughly the time frame, and then the village gets 100% in perpetuity. So, and, and our projections roughly based on where they begin, bring it to about a million three and change for that year when it gets to 100%. That, that's about the Assuming the taxing, we're still taxing for schools, et cetera. Yeah, assuming that the tax rate kind of grows, but there's models that are done by professionals that keep it at so the, it's, it's, it's a very large amount of money. The village is protected, however, for two reasons. The TIF bonds are payable solely from the taxes generated. There is no obligation of the citizenry, the uh, village board, or any property owned by the village board should the developer not generate the numbers that he's hoping to generate. We give 75% of what we get. That's it with a cap. So if our taxing system is ever revised, if we live long enough to see that, 75% of the incremental tax is derived from the property. Right. So Another excellent point is that the, the risk on that goes to the bondholders, not to the, not yes. to the city. So that's a very important right. distinction, and thank you for making that, is that the, the bondholders take the risk. So if the right. funds if the funds aren't there, nobody's knocking on the village's door to say make right. them whole for this right. year. They have to wait, and things happen. if. Uh, that uh, should happen to occur. Right. And, and the question is, in 20 years, will our taxing system change? It's your gamble, not ours. Thank both of you for your answer, because no. that's what I wanted to hear. Right. I wanted the public to hear that, too. That's sort of what I was fishing for. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I do, you know, I was sitting down here toying, do I want to address the brick issue? Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, in a way, I think I have to. Mm. You know, Trustee Ayala, you know, with all due respect, you're way too late to the ball game here. Yeah, we have actually been talking about this for about six months though. This should have been discussed when we did the overlay district with the P and Z. When the we, they spent a number of meetings discussing <clears throat> what they wanted to see in that, that area, oh, in that district, and that's when they talked about the facade and what materials they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. And that's where that question would be appropriate. So um, I don't think we want to do anything to slow down this agreement right now. We're looking at a 90 to maybe 120 day before we get approval from HUD. And if we're shooting for a construction period to begin in June mm -hmm. of next year, yeah. we don't have the kind of time to take and redo this and now, like uh, uh, the developer said, we're hearing rumors about interest rates going up, which would, if that happens, that will change his numbers drastically. And, and also, 
uh, our numbers to the village in terms of reimbursement for the development projects. So uh, I appreciate your concern. I think we have bricks up high enough here because I don't think anybody's going to be driving looking like this. Uh, so I think you're a little late to the ball game. Yeah, we'll, we'll disagree on my being late. Yeah, we always disagree. We've been talking that's, about that's that for a while. That's the good part about it. Yeah. <laughs> Since the first time they came in, we changed it from condos to, to apartments. But, 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 planning and zoning spent, I think it was about a year ago, when they redid the uh, overlay district for them. So that's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Chris. Anybody, <laughs> anybody else? No. 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 Okay, too late. Nope. Yeah. No. No, no, no. Can't. No. No. Not at this point. Yeah. Um, anybody else on the board? Trust one, one more quick question. Um, your timeline, um, <coughs> once you get your, your approval through HUD, prior to getting into approval, are you going to be getting demolition permits from the city and the state? Or is that, are you going to be you know, waiting on the, the HUD agreement? Um, the, the answer is uh, basically not the only thing that will be happening between now and the and again, the, the agreement, let's just make sure that's really securing financing. It's a closing. It's a traditional closing, so it all happens at the same time. So we'll have completely completed the, the drawings in the uh, uh, lead up to getting that final approval that you're referring to. So the answer is yes, we will, we will have created a whole set of permit drawings to allow the demolition and the building of it will get submitted to the village for its review and approval as part of that process. So there's an interim process that, again, Manager Keener very accurately mm -hmm. referred to that um, uh, assuming we, we, you know, we are able to go in this week, you know, that we're, we're, we're uh, looking for a 90 to 120 day that they'll green light us and say, get going on, on, on your drawings. And then that's when everything would begin in earnest. So what would uh, become the critical path would then become Fitzgerald and the time it takes to actually draw, engineer, and complete what we're showing in these uh, schematics. So those will happen, but we won't do anything. Well, we won't draw, we won't actually commence and start doing those things. Uh, probably start emptying some of the buildings, but we'll, we'll have to leave everything intact until that moment. Right, thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. All I want to say is, um, you know, we mentioned that this project has really been kind of in the conversation mode since 2007, predates even my time on the board. And over the years, I've watched this grow, I've watched this develop, I've watched it go dormant. We've all kind of seen that happen over the years. And, you know, when this board was installed three years ago, when I became your president, part of what we talked about was investing in our town. And that's what we've been trying to do every single day serving you, is investing in our town. We invested in our roads. We have a lot more to go. We have a lot of projects ahead of us. But that was one of the investments. Economic development was another one of those investments that we talked about. And you know, the time has come. We know that change is hard. It's hard for us even sometimes. And, I, and I've told the, the board, that during this process, you know, I'm really proud of this board for as thoughtful as they've been, how much time and energy that each of us has spent really considering this. Everybody up here, you know, we've conveyed concerns. We've conveyed things that we like. We've conveyed things that we don't like. To try to get it to a point where we're all comfortable bringing this forward and, and moving forward. This is for our entire town. This isn't a north side versus a south side thing. This is an entire village thing, and it's an investment. So with that, I think we need to do a roll call vote on this. Okay. Trustee Bolthus. Yes. Trustee Aiello. No. Trustee Cazell. Yes. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Yes. Trustee Wagner. Yes. President Bullwinkle. Yes. <laughs> OK. Item number six on the Committee of the Whole. Consider an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing the sale by public auction of personal property and seized vehicles owned by the village. Andrew Keener, you want to read these? You want me to do it for you? Oh, no, I can, I okay. can handle it. You've got, okay, yeah, we've got a few here to read off for you. So, <laughs> so there's, nothing, there's nothing before that. It's just right into what's, what's for sale. So. 
Well, Your Honor and, and board and, and folks in the audience at home, we do this on a regular basis. <clears throat> These are surplus vehicles that uh, we'd like to uh, auction. And then uh, once we auction and sell those vehicles, we'll take the proceeds and put those proceeds back in our equipment replacement fund and buy new vehicles. So at this point, I'll read the vehicles that the the staff would like to uh, auction off, which the first one is a village. It's number 112. It's a 2000 interstate equipment trailer. Uh, next is a village number 5, 2002 Ford Taurus. Next is a seized 1998 Ford Explorer Sport. Next is a seized 2000 GMC Yukon. And the final item is a seized 1993 Honda CB600 motorcycle. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions and comments from the public in regards to this item? Some auction items here. Okay. Questions and comments from the board? We do this all the time. They seem to be coming up a lot lately. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Aiello? Trustee Cassone? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bulthus? Yes. Present? Will we go? Yes. Okay. Item number seven on the Committee of the Whole, consider resolution of the Village Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving prevailing wage rates. Manager Keener. Thank you. The Village is required each June to either conduct its own investigation into prevailing wage rates in the area or adopt the determination of the Illinois Department of Labor. It is recommended the Board approve a resolution to adopt the prevailing rate of wages and publicly post the determination as required under the Act. This year's joint notice will be made with the Board of Education of Villa Park Elementary School District Number 45, Salt Creek, Salt Creek School District Number 48, DuPage High School District Number 88, and the Villa Park Library. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. <coughs> questions and comments from the public in regards to this item? Okay. Questions and comments from the board? It's something we do every year, too. Okay. We're going to roll call about this. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Aiello? President Bullwinkle? Yes. Okay, item number eight on the Committee of the Whole. Consider resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving an intergovernmental agreement with Milton Township. Manager Keener? Thank you, Your Honor. In 2015, the Village entered into an intergovernmental agreement with Milton Township to join forces in training and sharing community emergency response team certain members. That agreement expired on March 31, 2016. Staff recommends continuing this successful partnership by approving the resolution for the successor agreement. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, great. Any questions and comments from the public in regards to this item? Okay, seeing no questions and comments from the board. Do we have anything? We good? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. President Bullwinkle? Yes. Item number nine, consider resolution of the Village Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing acceptance <laughs> of a proposal from Professional Paving and Concrete Company Incorporated for seal coating village parking lots in the amount of $34,827. Manager Keener? Thank you, Your Honor. Village staff proposes crack sealing, sealing coating, and restriping of the two village-owned commuter parking lots, and, and Your Honor and Board, that's the north and south lots of Metro, and the train, uh, Twin Lakes parking lot. Two price quotes were obtained. The lowest cost contractor, Professional Paving and Concrete Company, Inc., submitted a price of $34,827. Funds are available in the Street Improvement Fund, non-referendum funds, and exemption from the bidding requirement uh, under Section uh, 2, 220A2 is also required. And, Your Honor, mm -hmm. uh, the seal coating is also environmental friendly. We double check. Oh, great. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Any questions or comments <laughs> from the public in regards to that item? Okay, seeing none. Questions and comments from the board? Trustee Wagner, you want to say? <laughs> I appreciate the manager's detail provided and that there's no coal tar in that ceiling. Yes. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Very, very good news there. Oh. Anybody else? Are we good? Good and tight. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bulthus? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Just President Bowling? Yes. Okay. Item number 10 on the Committee of the Whole. 
is consider a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, Tupage County, Illinois, approving maintenance of streets and highways by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code, fiscal year 1516. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the village annually transfers a portion of its motor fuel tax, otherwise known as MFT, allotment from the state of Illinois to the corporate fund to defray expenses associated with street maintenance, snow removal, street light, and traffic control energy and traffic control maintenance. A resolution is required to authorize the MFT funds to be transferred. This resolution is for fiscal year 2015-2016, which, Your Honor, is last year, mm -hmm. last fiscal year, and in the amount of $527,500. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, great, thank you. Any questions and comments from the public in regard to this item? Okay, seeing none, questions and comments from the board? Trustee Gazone. Uh, just a quick question, the, um, the MFT funds that resolution was passed by the, the House and the, the Illinois Board. Did we lose any money in the interim, or did we end up receiving everything that we were supposed to get? Sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Yes, when they, when they passed the resolution, we received what we were supposed to get. However, with the current budget impasse, um, that resolution is not effective because it's last year's fiscal year for them. And so we're hoping that they pass an interim measure so that everything begins to flow to us again. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Okay. All good. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We'll call the vote, please. Trustee Bulthus? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Present? Yeah. Bowling? Yes. Item number 12 on the Committee of the Whole, consider resolution of the Village of Villa Park, Tupage County, Illinois, authorizing change order number one, which is the final, to the contract between the Village and Girardi Sewer and Water Company for the 2015 North Princeton Water Main Improvement Project, result resulting in a deduction of $36,661. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, see those. Your Honor, will we be going back then? Oh, did I so, miss one? Mm -hmm. so, if you'd like, I'll jump in. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I checked it off. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I checked one off. I'm getting anxious here. Okay. Thank so you. Can we do this one and then we'll go back? Absolutely. I am one flexible person. Yeah, let's on. do this one first and I'll go back. Sorry about that. <laughs> the, vi <laughs> the village has a contract with Gennardi Sewer and Water Company of Norwich, Illinois, yeah. for the 2015 North Princeton Water Main Improvement Project. Proposed final change order number one consists of the final balancing of contract quantities as measured in the field. The net amount of proposed final change order number one is a deduction of $36,661 for an adjusted final contract amount of $437,816. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your flexibility and also to you in the audience. Any questions and comments uh, from the public in regards to this item? Seeing none, okay, we're gonna toss it up here. Anybody have any questions, comments about this item? Okay, we're gonna roll call vote then. Trustee Cassone? Yes. yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bulthus? Yes. President Bullwinkle? Yes, okay, moving up to item number 11 now. There's a lot of similarities to this one. Consider a resolution, <laughs> trying to trip us up here. Consider a resolution of the Village of Villa Park, Tupage County, Illinois, approving maintenance of streets and highways by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code for fiscal year 1617. Manager Keener. Thank you, Your Honor. The Village annually, annually transfers a portion of its, of its motor fuel tax, otherwise known as MFT, allotment from the state of Illinois to the corporate fund to defray expenses associated with street maintenance, snow removal, street lighting, and traffic control energy, and traffic control maintenance. A resolution is required to authorize the MFT funds to be transferred. This resolution is for fiscal year 2016-2017, which is the fiscal year we're in right now, mm -hmm. and in the amount of $527,500. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, Any questions and comments from the public in regards to this item, which is very familiar. <laughs> okay, uh, seeing none, any questions and comments from the board on this one? Pretty much the same thing. Okay, we're gonna roll call vote on this one too. Thank Trustee you. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Present? Bolthus. Yes. Okay, finally, item number 13 is convened to the formal agenda. Thanks for hanging in there with us, everybody. Okay. Top of the formal agenda is item number one, Village President's Report. And just have a few things, so bear with me. I always start out by asking for village project updates. So 
Swedish if we can, yeah. But I see, I see Rich, Rich Salerno here from Public Works. If you want to come forward and just give us some updates on all the projects happening in Villa Park, these are infrastructure projects in particular, so we can get an update. Right. Thank evening. you. Um, as previously mentioned, the Ardmore streetscape. Um, right now, currently, the lights on North Vermont should be turned on today. They've been installing light fixtures as well yeah. as that wiring. Remaining lights are in order and will be installed <coughs> when they arrive. Of course, we arrive within the next couple of weeks. All our work's complete, and a punch list will be generated shortly. Park Boulevard oh, improvements. Uh, SAD was started today and should be completed most likely by tomorrow. That is moving quickly. Um, and after this, the final surface course and minor restoration uh, remains. Uh, substantial completion expected by the end of the, the month. So that's okay. moving along as well. Okay. High Ridge Road, uh, all the culverts have been installed and it's completed. Uh, some minor concrete work is expected uh, to begin later this week. Uh, the 2016 street improvements, uh, construction is expected to start in the next couple of weeks pending the completion of work by NICOR. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And lastly, the North Princeton Phase 2 improvements. Uh, construction is also supposed to start in the next few weeks, also pending completion of NICOR. NICOR is currently on that block, lowering gas services, so future construction could commence. Okay. I know we were working hard to make sure that our schedule was in sync with NICOR's schedule. Correct. So we had numerous meetings with NICOR yes. to coordinate uh, both work efforts so that we're uh, following their efforts so that's not going to be late construction yeah. or when we're working at where we hit the gas services. Yeah. And so they don't come in after we've done a street already, you know, and want to go back in. So Absolutely. we've got we that want, communication. We want though. our roads to last. Yes. <laughs> and we don't want them to come and tear up streets we've already done. So, so. that would be bad. Okay. Great. And they've also patched St. Charles Road and saw the patch yeah good I'm glad they came back to do that that was a nasty hole we had in front of Village Hall so yes I'm on. yes another street too. okay thank, thank you. you okay a couple other quick things just a reminder that this weekend Friday June 17th from 6 to p 6 to 11 p.m. and Saturday June 18th from 11 to 10 30 11 a.m. to 10 30 p.m. is uh, Summerfest if you can believe it it's already here I know it's crazy already this weekend. Um, it's held on Ardmore Avenue and Park Boulevard near the Illinois Prairie Path. We have a car show this this year again. I think second or third year that we've had the car show. Third year we had the car show. It's Friday night. It's a lot of fun, a lot of food, a lot of music. And then Saturday is more food, more music, vendors, and lots of games for the kids. Lots of stuff to do for families. So if you are around this weekend. There's plenty to do. Please come by. It's a great time. The Summerfest Commission and the staff, they, everybody puts in a lot of work and a lot of energy leading up to this and our volunteers. We couldn't do it without our volunteers. So I want to definitely give a shout out to them. And they'll be out there this weekend wearing the red shirts. So um, make sure you say hello and thank them for all their hard work. It takes a lot of time to pull this off. But if you have any other uh, questions about this, you want more information, they have a website, www.villaparksummerfest.com or you can call Village Hall, 630-592-6052, and we can answer any questions that you might have, but we hope to see you out there. Also, just wanted to give you a heads up that this year, the second annual Love Your Neighbor Day will be held on Saturday, September 24th. It's uh, gonna be here in Villa Park, and basically it's uh, an event sponsored by the Christian Church of Villa Park, and there's a few other church too that in town that are participating, Calvary United Methodist Church and Community Congregational Church, both of Villa Park. And what they do is they go out and they, they help residents who have a hard time keeping up with their property, whether it be mowing their lawns or doing maybe some light painting on the outside, um, any kind of help that you might need to spruce up your property if you're not able to do it for whatever reason. We have a group of volunteers that will help uh, do all sorts of things for you that day. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you are interested in being considered um, when you, you know, as, as somebody who may need some help on this day, applications need to be submitted by August 31st, 2016. We'll put some information about this up on our website too at www.invillapark.com. We'll put it out on Facebook and Twitter and that kind of thing too. But I'm looking for a phone number for you. If you have any questions, you can call 
7262. It's a really wonderful project and a, and a great service. So certainly get your get your name in there because they probably will fill up fast this year. Also just wanted to, as my final comment, just a reminder that um, our coffee with the board coming up in July will be canceled. It would be scheduled for Saturday, July 2nd. It's going to be canceled because it hits during the 4th of July holiday weekend. And normally when we have a, a coffee that's, that hits on, on a holiday weekend, we do cancel it. We know a lot of people are out of town and busy and whatnot. So just wanted to put that on your radar that we aren't going to do coffee in July on the 2nd. But we will resume in August on Saturday, August 6th. It's here at Village Hall. starts at 9 o'clock. And we give you coffee and donuts. And we just sit around and talk about whatever's on your mind. So please plan on joining us in August if you're around. So with that, I'm done with my, my comments here. So I'm going to move on to item number two, public comments on agenda items. This is in regards to items four and five on the formal. So if anybody in the audience has anything that you'd like to <coughs> comment on, this is just four and five. Otherwise, non-agenda items will be item number six on the agenda. So seeing none. I'm going to move on to item number three then. Um, amendments of the agenda. This isn't you know, any amendments you might want to make to the formal. Anybody on the board have anything you want to do? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move on to item number four, the consent agenda. This is items A through K. And I think, let me look here because we've had a long night here. I think really quick I'm going to read these for the record. So bear with me. A through K. A is bill listing dated June 13th, 2016. This is one of two in the amount of $84,165.64. B, bill listing dated 2013, 2016, two of two in the amount of $1,687,616.07. C, minutes from the Com Village Committee of the Whole meeting for May 23rd, 2016. Minutes from the Village Formal Board meeting for May 23rd, 2016, that's item D. E, first and final reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, Tupage County, Illinois, authorizing the sale of, by public auction of personal property and seized vehicles owned by the Village. F, resolution for the Village of Villa Park, Tupage County, Illinois, approving prevailing wage rates. G, resolution of the Village of Villa Park, Tupage County, Illinois, approving an intergovernmental agreement with Milton Township. <laughs> H, resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing acceptance of a proposal from Professional Paving and Concrete Company, <coughs> Incorporated, for seal coating village parking lots in the amount of $34,827. I, resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving maintenance of streets and highways by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code for fiscal year 1516. J, resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving maintenance of streets and highways by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code, fiscal year 1617. And K, resolution of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, authorizing change order number one, which is final, to the contract between the Village and Girardi Sewer and Water Company for the 2015 North Princeton Water Main Improvement Project, resulting in a deduction of $36,661. I'd like to see those deductions. Mm -hmm. Motion for the consent agenda? Mr. President. Oh, Trustee Gazon. That we accept the. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a second? No, President. Okay, Trustee Case. Second. Okay. Any additional questions and comments from the board? Are we good? Okay. Uh, roll call vote then. Trustee Case? Yes. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bultus? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Present Bullock? Yes. Okay. Item number five on the formal is first and final reading of an ordinance of the Village of Villa Park, DuPage County, Illinois, approving a redevelopment agreement with Golden Spike <coughs> LLC. Golden Spike LLC proposes the development of a mixed-use complex to be known as Garden Station, which is intended to be located adjacent to Vermont to the north, Beverly to the east, Ardmore to the west, and Terra Street to the south, approximately 150 feet north of the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad tracks. Garden Station will be comprised of approximately 230 dwelling units. These units will include studio, one-bedroom, and two-bedroom apartments, and two-bedroom townhomes ranging from approximately 600 square feet to approximately 1,400 square feet. Garden Station will also provide an indoor heated garage, clubhouse, fitness center, outdoor pool, and commercial retail space, about 6,500 square feet. This project will result in an investment by Golden Spike LLC of not less than $46 million. 
due to the extraordinary cost to be incurred in connection with its development, including the demolition of the existing deteriorating and obsolete structures and revamping and reconstructing all utility systems required to service the project, Golden Spike LLC has requested financial assistance from the village in order to proceed with the project. I have a do I have a motion on the first and final reading? Madam President. Uh, Trustee Wagner. I'd like to make a motion to accept the redevelopment agreement. Okay. Do I have a second? Madam President, okay. I will second the Trustee motion. Trustee Taglia. All right. Any additional questions and comments from the board? Are we all good? We hashed out quite a bit earlier. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Taglia? Yes. Trustee Wagner? Yes. Trustee Bolthus? Yes. Trustee Cazone? Yes. Trustee Case? Yes. And President Bolingcoll? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to the village and to the residents for hanging in there with us. This is a big deal. We want to make you proud. Okay. Number six, public comments and non-agenda items. Approach the podium, state name for the record, and if you can limit your comments to three minutes, that would be fantastic. So and we'll need you to sign you know, the piece of paper there. Actually, to print so, is better. Yeah, mm -hmm. to print, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, my name is John Devins. I live at 1505 South Euclid, and I wanted to address to the board the uh, resolution that was passed Resolution number 16-23. That's all the work that's going to be coming off of Roosevelt Road um, onto Summit, the lights that are going to be put in at Villa, so forth and so on. Do you have it? Um, I put together uh, some requests by residents on our block to help stave off, mitigate the crazy amount of traffic that's coming down our street. There's going to be a BP that's put on the corner right across the street from Thornton's. You're gonna have the median that's going to be going down uh, Route 83. So you can only imagine how much traffic's going to be coming through. So you already have that um, in line. I'm quickly, uh, I don't even need to go through this. Uh, President Bullwinkle already directed me to a couple of people, but please do keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> you know, this is all public record, so you guys already approved this. Um, we are going to be looking for these things. And my question would be, is this something that we could address then again in the future? On what, on what level? <clears throat> the, the requests that are being made. Whatever. Well, well I, it's, I guess I should go over Yeah, if you want to give us a little more information <laughs> that might it. help us answer that question. Request the following, sidewalk from Roosevelt to Holmes, grant funding, no right turn from Roosevelt on uh, to Euclid Avenue, traffic counts pre and post construction, speed counts pre and post construction, okay. force no cut through between the hours of 7 to 9 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m., no curb cut on northbound Euclid Avenue from BP or Thornton, and ultimately cul de sac end of Euclid Avenue north of BP and Thornton. So mm -hmm. there you go. I will. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, it's aggressive, okay. but I pay, <laughs> I pay taxes. It's a beautiful area. Yep. Most importantly, I have four kids. There's 20 kids on the block. Wow. So, uh, again, if that. anybody wants to come over to my house at 1505 Euclid, sit out front with me, grab a cup of coffee and a cigar, and watch traffic <laughs> zoom by, <laughs> and then see what happens, you're more than welcome. Thank you. All right, thank it's you for sure. We'll get you linked up, you know. Andrew Keener was one of the folks I'd mentioned to you, and we'll we'll talk to you and and um, see what we can do. And you and you, and you also uh, I noticed you were talking with one of our traffic and safety commissioners too. So, I appreciate. Yeah, so your the timing right. was very I'll interesting. So, can I ask you one question? Have you formally sent that to anybody? Those uh, requests. I've sent two or three. That, okay. That's also another issue. I've mm -hmm. sent two or three emails and have not gotten a response. So. Next, I'll send one to you sure. and one to you. Okay, sounds good. All right. Yeah, and send, yeah, send it to us beautiful. too. Here. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. John, if you would, could you send that to me, please? I'd like to see it also. Thank you. And we have our 
our board liaison to the Traffic and Safety Commission right here, so Trustee Cazone, so you're surrounded. I'm sorry, Trustee, Trustee Wagner. I'm sorry, Trustee Wonderful. Wagner. <laughs> Trustee Cazone has been there too. So, but we can all help you out. All right, great. Anybody else on non-agenda items? Hello there, Cheryl. Hi. You know the drill. Yes, that's okay. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. All right. What's on your mind? We can give you three minutes. Okay. I'm Cheryl Tucker, 434 yes. South Park. No. First of all, I want to compliment the board for their support on Nesra. That was, I had a chance to go to their banker, and that was awesome. Oh, that's cool. So I'd like to thank the board formally for their support and the recreation the park that you back so strongly on helping them get through these things. Yeah. Second of all, um, I want to formally invite the people of Villa Park to get their beautiful show cars out of their garages oh. and their yeah. everyday, you know, antique cars that got, we've got all over the village hiding in garage to please bring them out Friday night. We would love to see them on Park and Ardmore. We're looking forward to having a big crowd. We also have a village-born uh, NASCAR driver. She is bringing out her rail. We have been asking her to come wow. in the last three years, and she set time to do that for us this year. Wow. So we are having, an, I believe it's an alcohol run rail out for her to see, um, for the people to come and see. <laughs> Along with all the beautiful cars that we expect to see, so I just want to formally invite everybody to come out Friday night from 6 to 10. As was mentioned earlier, there will be a band. There will be plenty of food, mm -hmm. Always so is. you don't have to worry about that. Right. And I understand we're going to have wonderful weather this year. No <laughs> rain predicted. Yeah. Okay, so have the last past three years, we've had to deal with possible rain, so uh. this year I the weather's going to cooperate this time. <laughs> we'll continue <laughs> dialing up Mother Nature. So. Yes, I'm dialing up Mother Nature All this right. time. All right. Okay. So well, great. Thank you for that. I appreciate it, Cheryl. Okay. Anybody else for non-agenda items? This is non-agenda items. Yeah. So that would, well, if you have a non-agenda item, something on your mind? Yeah. We, well, well, we need, yeah, we need you to state your name and then okay. sign your name as okay. legibly as you can for the clerk okay. on that piece of paper there, and we can All give right. you three minutes. My name is Benita Heathcote. I live at the end of East Reardon Road in Little Park, 615. I've had, uh, been to the village a few times, uh, been to the code enforcement to try to get some things addressed um, as far as a foundation that's was it, it was a shed and now the shed was taken down they got a violation and the foundation was left it's outside they've said they're going to make that a flower bed it's ugly it is a foundation also between the garage and the house there is a shower rod and that's exactly what it looks like with shower curtains hanging from it i was looking at this building here that you guys are going to do in villa park if that's okay for that to happen then if everybody here that lived in these apartments right here put up a shower curtain around their balcony, how would that look? Would anybody want to look at that? Mm -hmm. No. Would you guys want that beautiful building to have that like that? No. I have to live in the village right across the street from this. I have begged for help, and I'm not getting any. It's all said that it's, it's okay. Um, they don't have a problem with that. I don't understand why there's no problem with that. On the side of the garage, the whole side of the garage, they had a foundation they had to remove. They removed it, but now the siding is up there. It's pieces of bare wood. It's a gutter that's hanging way over. And there's still a bunch of, there's a, a heater, like a deck heater. There's garbage cans. There's a mower that doesn't run. All of that is shoved in the corner over there. This is the things that I have to look at. Not only that, I've, I've complained about a barking dog. I lived with that for two and a half years, asking to stop. Please stop your dog. 
They didn't do it. You get tired of it. So I reported it to the police. There was a hearing about that. I was never notified. Therefore, I couldn't say anything on my behalf. And I wasn't happy about that. Her, her case was dismissed. How is that possible? I'm the one who has to listen to that. My 78-year-old mother, grand, my mother-in-law lives with me. She's on oxygen. About a week ago, um, I, I witnessed uh, the neighbors across the street, him and a buddy were working on a car, and he walked around, his, the buddy walked around to the side in between the garage <coughs> and the building, in the woods, and urinated. I seen this happen. I called the police, they came out, they looked, they said, we don't see anything, we can't smell anything, it's your word against his. That's fine, okay? At the end of that day, since nothing happened, he walked through his driveway, pulled his pants down, and moaned me while I was on my deck. I called the police. They said, unless you get pictures, there's nothing we can do. What if that had been a child? If a child was standing there and he got, they got to see that, would that not be yeah. a bad thing? But because I'm an adult, that's okay. I don't agree with <coughs> that. Okay? So. Not only that, at the same time I called the police for being chined, he, he comes out and I said, I'm going to call the law. He had a gun in the back of his pants walking around strutting. Mm. Okay? That was intimidating to me. That was intimidating to my mother-in-law. But because the police came out there, he lied. He said he didn't have it in the beginning. Then he said he did. This is making me look bad, and I don't like it. Mm. Benita, okay. what, we'll, you know, what we'll definitely do is we'll get you, you know, continued, you know, uh, connection with the staff, and two of them are here tonight, you okay. know, um, and, and we'll continue to address these issues with you. Yeah, but, but would you, I mean, would you like to see no. Shark or Tank from that? Personally, oh, I would not. Personally, I would not. Okay. So, but. Just please, please hear me. That's all I'm asking. Okay. I don't want to have to Thank move. you. Thank you. I love it here. Yeah. And I will move. Okay. You know? Well, thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. Anybody else on non-agenda items? We good? Okay. We're going to move on to item number seven, village clerk's report. Do we have anything tonight? Well, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I just want to remind our senior community that we have a senior picnic coming up on oh Thursday gosh. the 16th. Yes, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wow. And uh, that is at the Community Recreation Building, 320 East Wildwood. And our own uh, police chief is our grill master. Oh. So he'll be doing a barbecue for the seniors. We have a sweet reminder as the entertainment. Okay. And this is all sponsored by the Senior Concern Commission. Okay. So we hope to see the seniors out in force. What time does the picnic start again? 11 to 1. 11 they to can 1. come sooner, but the actual meal part starts okay. at 11 until okay. 1 p.m. Great. Thank you. That's a it. good time. I've been before. It's a lot of fun. So I put a lot of work into it. So thank you. Here. We've got a couple, yes. so we're happy to have them out. Thank tonight. you. Okay, moving yeah. on to Village Good Trustees course. Report. I'll start to my left tonight. Trustee Cazone, do you have anything for us tonight? Uh, there's a couple things. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Advisory <laughs> Commission will have our monthly meeting tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, June 14th, 7 o'clock at the Iowa Community Center. And obviously, everyone's welcome to join. And uh, this Saturday is the annual Lauren Kiefer 5K run at Willowbrook High School. Uh, registration is from 7 till 9. The race starts at 9 o'clock at uh, Ardmore and the, uh, the entrance to Willowbrook there. And that's always a, it's a good cause. I know uh, there was a, a resolution at the last meeting mm -hmm. uh, for the, the Lauren Kiefer uh, Foundation. So yeah. but it's a good cause. They, uh, they help a lot of people. And uh, it's always a good time. They have a good turnout. Yeah. And you can run 5k and then uh, go to Summerfest mm -hmm. and enjoy yes. the day. That's it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to that on Saturday. I'll be handing the frame proclamations, all signed, sealed, and delivered, so oh, ready nice. for them. So we'll, we'll be doing that for them that day. Okay, thank That's you for it. that. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Wagner. Thank you, Madam President. I should have a couple things uh, uh, maybe of interest to Mr. Devins. The Traffic and Safety Commission, uh, their meeting is scheduled tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, June 14th at 8 p.m. here at Village Hall. Yes. And uh, yeah. members of the public who have concerns about traffic and safety mm -hmm. are encouraged to attend. Um, just want to mention that I, um, I attended the, uh, the reception for the Vivian Mayer uh, yeah. photograph exhibit at the Park Art Center. It was really wonderful. 
there were a lot of folks from other communities that came to see it. Yeah. And uh, just, uh, it's a really uh, fabulous place. They offer art classes. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with your inner artist, mm -hmm. that'd be the place to go. And the exhibit is going to be at the Park Art Center until July 30th. Um, I just want to <coughs> offer my congratulations to staff on a successful reopening of both pools this weekend. Um, I was, didn't have a chance to go swimming, but I heard from other folks that everything went well. Uh, so uh, kudos to staff on that. And I also want to just offer my, echo my uh, uh, appreciation for the members of the Summerfest Commission who put in so much work to put on this event and uh, really looking forward to this weekend. So that's all I have. All right, great. Thank, thank you. you. Trustee Aiello. Nothing, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Bolfus. Uh, just one thing, the Economic Develop Development Commission meeting scheduled for Wednesday has been canceled. Oh. So. Okay. Thank you. You're calm, but you're, you're sitting out on the steps. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that heads up. Appreciate it. Okay, Trustee Taglia. No report. Okay. Trustee no Case. Report. Okay. Moving on then to uh, Builder Manager's report. Item number nine. Your Honor, I'm passing this evening. Okay. Item number 10, Village no Attorney. Report. No report. Okay. All right, item number 11 on the formal. Consider executive session A5 ILCS 120 2 C1 Personnel Matters and Collective Bargaining B5 ILCS 120 2 C5 Purchase or Lease of Property C5 ILCS 120 2 C6 Sale or Lease of Property D5 ILCS 120 2 C11 Pending Litigation and E5 ILCS 120 2 C21 Discussion of Closed Session Minutes. I have a motion to convene into exec session. Madam no, President. Uh, Trustee Wagner. I'd like to make that motion. Okay. Do you have a second? Madam President. I'll second. Trustee Cadone. Okay. Um, we'll do a roll call vote on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trustee Wagner. Yes. Trustee Bulthus. Yes. Trustee Aiello. Yes. Trustee Cazone. Yes. Trustee Case. Yes. Trustee Taglia. Yes. President Bullwinkle. Yes. Okay. We're going to convene into exec session and then we will adjourn following exec session. So we do, do we need to do this now or afterwards? No, after. We, yeah. we'll, have action. we'll be coming back afterwards with action. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Twice and we'll convene.